join us back here at Silverstone for this exciting British Grand Prix as the leading pack comes into view again. And bad news for rating fans as number one driver Nelson Davretti is back in the pits again. It looks like he's in real trouble this time. Try it again, sir. <laughs> You enjoyed that one? Oh, yes. You know, I cried and cried, I did. Yeah, you would, yeah. They should have got an award for that. I thought it was that. lovely. Yeah. I was gripped for two hours. Get away. That's the longest I've been gripped in a long time, I can tell you. You don't have a sequel to that, do you? Uh, no, I'm sorry, but uh, Charles and I haven't made Royal Wedding 2 yet. <laughs> on the box here do you know what this is have a look at that look it's the latest thing from japan it's a tv wristwatch hey it's a bit, bit, bit miniature isn't it now one of them japanese walk around going oh <laughs> it's all gadgets now isn't it i mean you've got the stereo the compact disc the computer the video no the video what a machine that is isn't it what for me it's perfect i mean can i take all my favorite programs i've got a new video now it's an irish one it records all the programs you don't like and plays them back when you're out <laughs> join the local video shop now that's a sort of massage parlor for the mind I walked into it the other day, I said, Dirk, got any good films? He said, oh, yeah, plenty good films, they're plenty. <laughs> He's a cockney. <laughs> he said, we've got plenty good films. We have got the latest James Bond film, Octopussy. I said, what's it about? He said, it's all about a cat with eight legs. <laughs> he said, we're already having a thriller about the man that hires a hitman on his credit card. I said, what's that then? He said, murder on the American Express. <laughs> he said, well, what about the new David Lean film? All about a man that eats nothing but curry for a whole year. I said, what's it called? He said, Passage to India. <laughs> I said, no thanks. And I love the film stars. Have you seen that Michael Caine? He's my favourite, isn't he? Good evening. My name is Michael Caine. And not a lot of people know that. Do you know what the difference between the White House and McDonald's is? There's no difference at all. They both have a clown called Ronald. <laughs> It's not, they're not on page one. And they're not on the second page. And after a time, you realise they just keep repeating the same ones over and over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> Brian. Hello, dear Jill. What are you doing here? Well, uh, I missed you at Stringfellow, so I thought you'd be here. Actually, I wondered if I could talk to you. Ken's stuck at home having a family reunion with the wardrobe. Aye, right, well, sit yourself down, Deirdre. I could do with some company. I'm supposed to meet Gail here, like, but she's been delayed at cafe. Apparently, the deep fat fry spilt all over the floor. Yeah, she's got to stay behind and mop it up with her face. What? You mean Gail's rubbing her face and all that filthy grease and fat? Aye. You know Gail, Deirdre. She won't let an old beauty trick like that slip her by. Oh, actually, Bran, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Well, go ahead, Dreary. I'm all ears. And teeth. Well, it's me air, Brian. I can't seem to do a thing with it. Have you tried involuntary manslaughter? I thought maybe you could do something. You know, at the garage. Sorry, Deadly. We don't touch write-offs. It's not a write-off, Brian. I just thought maybe you and Kevin could give it a bit of a service, that's all. What kind of a service? What sort do you do? Funeral service. Well, I'll give you a broken nose in a minute. Why? Don't you need it anymore, though? <laughs> Can't you just give it an oil change, then? Sorry, Drippy. No can do. Then you won't help. Look, Droopy, I'd love to help you, love, but, like, nothing gives me more pleasure than taking on lost causes. But it's just not on. If I help you, I'll have to help everyone else, won't I? It's just the thin end of the wedge. Or, in your case, the back end of a bus. <laughs> Can't I change your mind? Sorry, Deidre. Oh, Weck. Well, what am I to do now? You could take your hair down to Jack Duckworth's. Jack Duckworth's? Why? He's looking for a new chamois to do his window cleaning. <laughs> In this week's TV Times, an advert for a collection of porcelain thimbles, an amazing book club special offer, an application form for a Barclay card, and an envelope in which you can post off your film negatives. All this and more in this week's TV Times. And 
just starting on Channel 4 is another potpourri of entertainment. There's Maranjeev Singh showing you how to tandoori your guinea fowl, followed by a subtitled film about pre-war Lithuanian peasants by Werner von Gobschmacker, ending with Blag, the late-night alternative chat show featuring all those guests you never see on Wogan. Quite an evening in store. Or, of course, you could always stay with us on ITV. And Bobby Davro. <laughs> And welcome to Junk. Uh, I didn't, I didn't. Keith Harris, beat your heart out. Okay, now a little bit later on, we'll be talking to uh, some of the people involved in... Uh, we'll also be bringing you some of the latest videos and an exclusive interview with... Um, um, uh, what's his name? Yeah, it's all your fault. Anyway, uh, we will be talking to Elton John about his hair transplant and we'll be asking the question, is it really a case of gone today, hair tomorrow? Do you get it? Do you get it? Okay. Whoop. How about that for a goose? <laughs> And uh, what's a pretty girl like you doing in a load of junk like this? That's what I want to ask her. Want to meet me behind the monitor? Ah, yeah, yes. Hello, and uh, <laughs> welcome to uh, Junk Competition. And if you answer the next three questions correctly, you can win a day out with your favourite rock star. How about that? Yes, you could be the lucky winner of a plane ride with Gary Newman, <laughs> a spin in the car with Andrew Ridgely, and our star prize, a boat trip with Simon Le Bon. <laughs> My ticket's not included. OK, so here are your three questions. Um, question one, would the top of Bruce Springsteen's head come off if you were to remove his sweatband? Uh, question two, if Orville got murdered, would Keith Harris have a hand in it? And question three, how on earth did an idiot like me manage to get a job on television? Um, yourself. If you know the answers to all those questions, uh, write them on the back of a £10 note and send them in to me, care of junk. OK, and now for a load more junk, it's over to Jonathan King. Hello, and welcome to Junk in the USA. And I hope you're ready to react to a riveting recording of my recent reception when I confronted a famous actor who has received worldwide respect and he was recognised as a really renowned and radical performer with a reputation of rendering a remarkable range of roles in her repertoire. I'm talking, of course, about Meryl Streep. Now, Meryl, I know you've won one or two Oscars, but what are all these for? Well, I always win. So the Academy thought it'd be best all round if they just gave me the next 35 years worth. Yes, but they're all identical. So are my performances. Now, you've got a bit of a reputation of being, shall we say, difficult to work with. <laughs> difficult? Me? Oh, Jonathan, you've got to be kidding. I mean, once they put me on a set with these terrible people, they were emoting and inflecting and acting. It was awful. Is that so bad? Well... I've never done it, and I've won all these Oscars. <laughs> Listening honestly made to your latest film entitled Plenty, I believe you're starring opposite one of our very own British talents. Oh, uh, you mean Stink? Uh, surely you mean Stink. <laughs> you haven't seen his performance. <laughs> well, there again, it was his first film. Uh, no, but surely he was in Brimstone and Treacle, Dune and The Bride. I'm sorry, I didn't see them. Who did? Meryl Street, thank you. Sure. Well, that's all from Junk in the USA. Next week, I'll be interviewing Robert Whitford about his whip roaring and ribald role in his really <laughs> wife's recent release, Butch Casserole and the Bloat with the Orange Hair. <laughs> but now, it's back to the UK to see a performance of Meryl's co star, Sting, in the video of his latest single. <laughs> Watch 
Now, look what you've done. Hold on, I'll get him. There aren't any sharks in here, are they? No. Crocodiles ate all the sharks. Australians wouldn't give a castle mine four X for anything else. To cool, clean, and protect today's high-performance engines, SO scientists have developed new SO Superloop, a high-performance motor oil designed to cope with the stresses of today's high-performance petrol, diesel, and turbocharged engines. These are the cars, this is the oil. New SO Superloop, the striped protector. Quality at work. Care for a last cigarette before we shoot you? No, thank you. They're bad for your health. <laughs> Miss. Oi, oi, oi! I want the latest spanned out ballot, please. Record or cassette? Uh, oh, uh, the record, please. Double album, single album, laser disc, compact disc, or the single? Uh, single, please. Right, seven inch or twelve inch? Seven inch, please. Picture disc or plain sleeve? Uh, uh plain sleeve, please. <laughs> Where's the record? Black vinyl, red vinyl, blue vinyl, pop-up disc, flexi disc. Daddy, it's very upsetting, please. He shouts a lot and gets really angry, even when he hasn't got one. And sometimes Mummy gets one, and Daddy still gets angry. <laughs> Mummy always gets hers at the same time, just before bed. In this week's Celebrity Chat, we talk to Felicity Kendall, the Sloan Ranger's answer to Molly Sugden. No matter how famous her face becomes, she always ends up at the bottom. Oh, I'm so scatterbrained, I really am. I do get annoyed with myself. I mean, for instance, a Jehovah's Witness came round the other day and said, would I come to their end of the world meeting? And I said, could you come back next year? <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> no, I try and be organised. It always backfires, though. I mean, for instance, I sent off for this household gadget that cuts housework in half. I sent off for two of them, I think. <laughs> and then someone gave me two tickets for live from Her Majesty's. I spent two hours queuing in the rain outside Buckingham Palace. Oh. <laughs> it's time to trust, honor, and obey as once again we invite you to watch your vows. And now, here's your pick of the Vicks, the Right Reverend Victor Slick, the slickest Vic with the quickest tricks. Here's Victor. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Please don't, no, don't, don't, please don't. Don't, don't, please don't, don't, don't stop, don't stop. <laughs> Welcome to Watch Your Vows. The show where we turn deadlock into wedlock, where there are no ban on the bands, where the ring of fortune fortunes those with the ring. Last week, the lovely Debbie and Alan said, I do, but who are they to know? <laughs> <laughs> so this week, we got two brand new contestants to tie the matrimonial knot and play What's Your Vows? <laughs> John Byrne Stevens, come on down! Jane, lovely 
Jane, all in white. <laughs> Who's she kidding? <laughs> okay, John Jane, welcome to Watch Your Vows. You both know the rule. I'm going to ask you a series of questions. I want your replies. If those replies match the ones on these cards, then we go on. If they don't, and you get them wrong, the marriage can't go ahead. Oh. So what do correct answers make? <laughs> and romances mean wedlock. Okay. Forsaking all others, do you take Jane to be your lawfully wedded wife so long as you both shall live? Stop the clock. I, I do. I do is the correct answer! <laughs> well done, John. Well done, John. Fabulous. Are you nervous, John? Well, yeah. A little bit nervous? Yeah. A lot nervous? Really nervous? Yeah. Good. <laughs> okay, next question. Complete the sentence. For richer, for poorer, in sickness and in... Stop the clock. For richer, for poorer, in sickness and in, in the bar. Um, a little louder, John. In, in, inside the house. Um, for richer, for, for poorer, in sickness and in health. Yes, we can accept it for Richard Papari to give any health. It's the correct answer. <laughs> fabulous, fabulous, really brilliant. Truly fantastic. Aren't I? <laughs> okay, now it's time to play Find the Ring. Okay, the lovely Michelle has brought on the Watch Your Vows box of confetti. Inside the box of confetti is the wedding ring. John has got just 60 seconds to find that ring and put it on his betrothed finger. Okay, John? Yes. Your 60 seconds starts... Not yet! We're gonna put you in a blindfold to make things a little bit more difficult. Okay, blindfold him. There he goes. Doesn't he look a brat, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> okay, we're really gonna confuse you, John. Okay, John, your 60 seconds starts... From now! <laughs> he's got no idea. Oh, he's found the box. He's found the box. Oh, out comes the confetti. Find that ring, John. Come on. Find the ring. He's got the ring. He's got the ring. Put it on your control finger. Come on, John. Get it on that finger. Get it on. Get it on. Stop the clock. Stop the clock. Stop the clock. Okay, John, John, you managed to find the wing, you put it on your patrol finger in just 41 seconds. Didn't he do well? Okay. Thank you. Okay, John, okay, let's find out now what you've won so far on Watch Your Vows. And what better prize than this fabulous set of one prayer mats? Kneel on it, don't kneel on it, the choice is yours. And how about this superb home entertainment center? Yes, a 24-volume set of hymns, ancient and modern. And tonight's star prize, the Watch Your Vows Luxury Choir Boy. Watch Your Vows and this Luxury Choir Boy could be yours. They're all yours, John, to take home with you tonight. Or, or you can gamble a lot and go for Jane's hand in marriage. What's it gonna be, John, my old fruit? Skyfire! You've got your friends in tonight. Let him make his own mind up, boys and girls. He'll go for the marriage. He'll go for the marriage! You're a brave man, John. Over here, Jane, John, over here. You're a brave, brave man. Okay, Jane. John has selected to go for the marriage, which it means it's all down to you now, Jane. Lovely, sweet, gorgeous Jane. Okay. Take John by the hand, Jane. Here we go with the questions. Jane, do you promise to trust, honor, and obey John? And I can't help you on this one. I do. Jane, Jane, I've got to tell you that that is the correct answer. <laughs> Okay, Jane. Lovely Jane. Ooh. Jane, it's the last question. You answer this one correctly and you're joined together in holy matrimony with John. Okay, Jane. I want you to take your time on this one. You've got all the time in the world. You really want to see you win, don't we? Okay, Jane, take your time. I'm rooting for you now. Jane. Who won the US Open in 1968? <laughs> 
Jane. For, for Richard Cora. US Open in 1968, Jane. Thingy, uh... Professional golfer. For better or what, uh, US Open. Um, the... mm. Oh, Jane. You blew it. Beaten by the clock. And, of course, the answer we all were looking for was... Lee Trevino. Lee oh. oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Well, that means the whole thing's off. You're not married. You don't get the presents. The honeymoon in Corfu is cancelled. And as for the wedding certificate, well... <laughs> well, I'm not going to let them go away empty-handed, folks. No, because I'm generous, I'm kind-hearted, and I'm Victor Slick. I'm going to give them one last chance, and I'm going to ask Jane one last question. And, Jane, I've got to accept your first answer. So, Jane, did you know John was having an affair with your sister, Deirdre? What? <laughs> John, oh, no! by the bell! Which means that's all for tonight. They're fabulous losers, don't you agree? Well, there's still time for all you lovely people at home to worship each other with your buddies if you watch your vow. Terribly raw, cause well, my voice is absolutely divine. Turn it down. Every now and then I get a bottle of whiskey and some cigarettes to make my voice Turn flat. it down. When will you admit that you were not in the same class and realize you just have to Turn wait? Turn it down. Right now. Everybody knows that I'm a star. Turn it down. Right now. Everybody says you should go far. Turn it down Every now and then I get a little bit And when some people knock my sound Turn it down Every now and then I get a little bit sick And when they tell me that the Welsh can't